what is your definition and how do you feel about this thing they're floating around about defunding the police? What does that mean to you when you hear that statement? To me, what, what that means is revamping the police departments as they are. It means to me that they stop paying officers for all kinds of tasks that they should not be doing. What it means is that if if you have a police department with a half a billion dollar budget, that you stop giving them, you know, $200 million to go buy armored tanks and, and military assault rifles and, and, you know, combat caliber body armor and all the other stuff. You don't, you stop giving them, you stop having them buy all that stuff as if they are going to war with the citizenry. What you do is you redirect that money to pay for other stuff like mental health care professionals that can work with the department. So when there are calls that someone's having a psycho, a, a, a you know, a, a psychotic break, that you don't send a 23 year old, you know, officer who's barely out of the academy and doesn't have any psychological, you know, doesn't have any, doesn't have any mental health training. And you send them there with nothing but a gun and and some some training on how to subdue people. Instead, you you actually have professionals that can go there that can deal with these people and can get them into a place where they can say, okay, we we we've, we've calmed this situation down, we've got this person stable, and now we can get them to help. And it may it may be that you have a series of of, uh, of PAs on staff that are like mental health professionals, like mental health specialist PAs that can actually administer medication. So maybe the person's there and you need to give them a sedative. You know, cops can't show up at a scene with somebody and give them a sedative. They're not, they're mm -hmm. not medically trained for that. They're not, they don't have the, they don't have the approval for that. They don't have the licensing for that. But if you have people that can do that, then you take a lot of the, of the violence out of situations. You know, it's the same thing if you're dealing with kids. Stop send, stop having schools with, you know, with 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 10 or 15, you know, uh, police resource officers and you have one counselor for 2000 students. I mean, that's insane. You know mm -hmm. what? I mean, you don't need all if you if you invest in the counselors to talk to the kids, to deal with the kids, to help them as they go along, then you don't need the policing in the, to begin with because the kids don't get into trouble. They have someone to go to, you know? They have someone that can guide them. They are guidance counselors. That's what they can do, you know? When you have a kid who thinks, I can never go to college, fuck this, I'm, I'm tired of this shit. I'm just gonna go join my gang. I'm gonna join my local street gang and just get my hustle on. Well, if you have a guidance counselor that recognizes this kid is, is brilliant, you can tell them, hey, man, look, I recognize you have an aptitude for, for robotics. And let me show you how much money these people are making. And this guy may look at this and be like, oh, crap, I can go sell drugs and make a few hundred dollars or a few thousand dollars on the weekend. Or I can go in and become a robotics engineer and make hundreds of thousands of dollars after I get out of college. You know, mm -hmm. and so but you need people to, to guide them in that direction. And instead, what we have are, are police officers that are making everybody in our schools feel like criminals. And when you make someone feel like something for long enough, they're going to start to act like it. And it's the same way within our general community, too. They, you know, if you if you stop over policing people and start providing people with resources, People will people will have better reasons. They will they will have a better society. People will treat themselves better. They will treat their fellow man better. You're still gonna have there's still gonna be crime, and you're still gonna need law enforcement officers. But those people that are there, that will be they will be able to handle those situations better. You know. Okay. So if that's, and, and that's really what I mean by defunding, I don't, I don't mean okay. why, when I, when I think of defunding the police departments, I don't, I don't think of just saying, okay, we're going to, we're going to stop paying police officers. And so there's not going to be any money for the police department. No, what I, what I, when I think of defunding police departments, I mean, they stop, I think of stop paying all these, uh, stop with these ridiculous budgets. Stop with these budgets where you have, you know, your city has a, a $10 billion budget and a, uh, and a billion of it's going to the police department. You don't need that. I mean, come on, you don't need that. Unless you happen to be New York City that has all those terrorist divisions. That's a different story because they have, I mean, they're dealing with all that terrorism crap. They have all these special federal grants. And even then, they need to have part of the thing with defunding police departments, they need to bring in specialists. Like, 
there's there's no reason why there's no reason why they should have a regular old beat cop show up to deal with somebody who's having a, a psychotic break. They're not equipped to handle it. Every I, I as I heard one police chief on TV say, not every police officer is trained to deal with every situation. They were like some of the police officers that 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 are out there doing crowd control. They shouldn't be doing crowd control. Not every police officer is equipped to do that. And, and maybe it doesn't even matter because we look at the we look at those officers in Buffalo. These were people that were on a special team that are trained for for crowd control. And part of, as far as I understand with crowd control, part of that is is de-escalation. They made no attempts to de-escalate anything. They they went from from zero to a hundred, you know. So. I mean, part. I think part of the thing with defunding these these departments is is that they need to fire everyone. Everyone. I don't care if you are the chief or if you are the brand new recruit out of the academy. Everyone needs to get fired, and they need to make every single person reapply. And that's the way it should, they they need to go through their background checks again. They need to go through their psychological examinations again. They need to go through their fitness exams again. They need to go down now. If you've been on the, if you've been on the department, or if you've been on the, um, what's up, T streams? <laughs> so if you've been, if you've been on the job for for five years or ten years or something like that, you maybe you don't need to go back through the academy, but you definitely need to go back and have your background checks again, your psychological checks again, your fitness checks again to make sure you're still capable of doing that job, you know? Because there's a lot of stuff that people do. In those five and ten years, they're not the same person that they were. And if you no. have all these issues, I mean, one of those guys that was on the that 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 got arrested from uh, from George Floyd had been on the job for four days, four mm -hmm. days. And so, I mean, T Strange, what we're talking about is um, defunding defunding the police department and what a definition is. And Larry just gave a, a very good definition. And I asked Larry for the definition because I'm getting worried. I was getting worried because when you ask all these people on TV, the politicians, to give a definition of what it means, no one could give a clear answer. And so I'm almost against the idea or the terminology of defunding the police because the first thing people think of that the Republicans are using is they're trying to abolish the police. And that's not what we're calling for. We're right. calling for reforming the police department to make it a better place. But right. what I'm seeing happening is there's been this coalescing behind defund the police of people who were starting to sway that maybe we should be doing more for equality in black people. But now that our president is making it, I'm not going to defund the police. He's making it seem like it's, you're just trying to wipe out the police. And some, some people are starting to think that's what it is going down. Do you think that right now, should we use that terminology or should we use something different? Because we still got to get rid of M enemy number one, which is Donald Trump. Yeah, <clears throat> I think I think the term is a little bit misleading. Uh, I think the term is a little bit misleading by definition. And that was, you know, that was like the general consensus that I had that I had first understood just from listening from, uh, you know, outside sources and people that really didn't know as, you know, as it start, you know, as that ideal started circulating, I think if they're going to, you know, if, if that's the route that they're going to take, you know, maybe they should, you know, clear up the language a little bit. So it's more easily understood, but, um, you know, it police reform, uh, definitely needs to take place. There's, there's absolutely no doubt about it. I mean, you, you, you see that just from the pop-up incidents that's going on in the middle of this crisis. So, uh, so it definitely lets you know that it's something definitely needed uh, in that area. And you know, I, I do hope that they, I do hope that they get around to it. And uh, you know, so. Hey, you know, one of the good things about this, too, is T-Streams, is that because so much of these protests have been 
filmed, not just what the news is showing us, but mm -hmm. filmed by individuals with their cell phones, with their cameras, whatever they have out there, where they're able to record the raw happenings at these protests front you know point of view version you're seeing mm -hmm. the the brutality of these officers and so it's not they right. cannot make the argument that these are bad apples that it's just one bad officer out there no what you're seeing is this is the way they are trained to respond to the citizens and they are brutal and they are violent and people are getting able they're able to see this firsthand and see oh okay this is what black people deal with when they're not really even doing anything and now because we're out here saying something about it the police have turned their batons and their tear gas and their rubber bullets on us right. and you know and so i think that i think the fact that they're able that people are seeing it is changing a lot of people's minds and i think People have said people have been saying it feels different. It feels like this can be a sustained movement. Mm -hmm. And I think it might very well be. I hope that it is, you mm -hmm. know, but I think it's very important that people are actually able to see it. Because when you watch the news, the news does show some of the stuff that police are doing. But when you look at social media, you see so much more like mm -hmm. some of the stuff that's happening that's on social media. We may never have it may never have gotten to the news, you right. know. But like here's the old the man getting pushed down. We may never have seen that. There wasn't news Spe cameras there. Larry, speaking of that old man, would you believe that I was in a right wing group? And you want to know what they had to say about that old man? I, I can't make this stuff up. I really can't make it up. Larry, right. there was a thread with one guy saying, ladies and gentlemen, this is all made up to make the police look bad. You want me to tell you how many likes that particular thread has? Mm -hmm. I'm okay, sure it had plenty. I can't make this stuff up, man. It had 500 likes, like 80 <laughs> comments. People really believing that homeboy put some ketchup in his ear to get pushed down and have the ketchup fall out of his ear. Wow. I, yeah. I can't. Make yeah, this and stuff I guess. Up. I guess. And I guess he. I guess he planned to go to to go to the hospital and still be in the hospital days later. Yeah. I'm sure he planned for all that. Oh, all of them were staged. And ladies and gentlemen, to keep the movement going, just go to shoplifegains.com. Get your T-shirts. Wear the movement. Keep it going by wearing it. Have something to remind you that we are still fighting for equality. And these are some of the people that have done it for you and helped you out and some of the causes we're fighting for. 